Welcome to the Anime Audiophile Podcast. Please like and subscribe for more. Thank you. Sasuke Shinden, the teacher's star pupil. Chapter 2 Let's not just stand out here on the street talking, Himino Lily said, before leading took Baruto and his teammates to a brand new high-rise condominium in the new town. As they slipped through the brightly lit, glass-walled entryway, the concierge station there simply bowed, entirely unfazed by Lily's attire. Lily held up an ID card when they got in the elevator, not bothering to push any buttons. Baruto scratched his head at this, only to discover that the elevator went straight to her apartment. When the doors opened with a ding, he found himself looking into her living room. Huh? Huh? What about our shoes? The lack of an entryway baffled him. You can just leave them on, Lily replied. It was almost vulgar how large the tiled living room was. The space was filled with a TV as big as a futon and a grand piano that was pink for some reason. Stuffed rabbits and bears sat snugly together on an expensive-looking leather sofa. As Baruto whirled his head back and forth to take it all in, Lily put some tea on and then moved a number of the stuffed animals to the top of the piano to make space for them all to sit on the sofa. Baruto took a sip of tea and grimaced. It's sweet. It's chocolate tea. Cute, isn't it? It seemed that those strange creatures known as idols were driven to seek out cuteness even in their tea. Baruto stared incredulously once more at Lily sitting before him. Wavy. Golden hair, sharp purple eyes. Himino Lily herself, from the other side of the TV screen. So maybe you could explain things to us then? Mitsuki asked, looking straight at Lily. He didn't touch his tea. Could you tell us why on earth you would go so far as to dress up in a cat costume to talk to us? Right. Her voice somber, Lily set out a piece of paper the size of a business card. This arrived for me this morning. The short message was written in slanted characters, as if with the help of a ruler, if you don't cancel bewitching Macar and Knight, we will kill him Eno Lily during the show. This is your first and final warning. Bewitching Macar and Knight? Serata raised a doubtful eyebrow. It's the name of my upcoming show, Lily replied. There's the possibility that it's a prank, Mitsuki suggested, examining the card. Did you talk to your agency about this? I haven't said anything yet, she cried. I don't want to tell them. My agency's hard-headed. They'll cancel the show. I think that'd be the right choice, though. Sarada's gaze was cold. I have to do the show. Lily scrunched her face up in a pout. All the fans who are on this journey with me. If I up and cancel right before the show, I just know they'll leave me. They're not going to leave you over something like that, Baruto muttered. Idle fans are creatures of extremes. Lily leaned toward him forcefully. They only have two settings, they love you or they hate you. They watch my every movement. If I mess up in any way, any way at all, they'll happily cut me loose. Still, it'd be better to put in a proper request through the formal channels, Sarada said gently. Lily shook her head. The Hokage is wise. Do you really think he'd let the show go on just because a selfish idol like me wants it to? I just know he'd cancel the whole thing, she said, displaying some self-awareness. So you came to talk to us instead, Sarada said. Yes. I thought I could get a ninja to protect me behind the scenes if I went and asked one directly. And, and your team seven. You're special. Baruto, the oldest son of the seventh Lord Hokage, with Hugo blood in his veins. Sarada, Uchiha descendant, daughter to Haruno Sakura, a student of the fifth Hokage. You, you're kind of a mystery, Mitsuki. I don't know much about you, but I get the feeling that you're something super special. Also, you all seem really nice. You've really checked us out. Serato looked doubtful again. That last reason is probably the whole of it, hmm? Mitsuki muttered, exasperated. Baruto felt exasperated too. 
Although he was normally happy to listen to praise being heaped on him and his family, he could feel nothing but suspicion in this situation. Lily's purple eyes filled with tears. If it's about money, I can pay. I haven't used any of the salary I've been getting since I became an idol. I've saved all of it. She thrust a check out at them. It's not about money dash, Baruo started, and then spotted the row of zeros squeezed onto the check. One, ten, hundred, thousand. He whistled under his breath. How many extreme ninja cards could he get with all this? We can't take money for an unofficial mission. Sarada's voice brought him back to reality. Yeah. We can't take that, Mitsuki agreed. What? Lily opened her eyes open wide and put a hand to her mouth. Does that mean you'll take my case for no pay at all? How is it you only hear what you want? Sarada shouted. It means we won't do it. Please. Lily's bottom lip quivered. I'll do anything. Oh. How about I get you some VIP tickets for my concert? Why would we want that? Sarada's eyes narrowed dangerously. Setting aside the matter of pay, Baruto's mind immediately leaped to Himawari and how her eyes had shined as she stared at Lily on that singing show. He was sure she'd be crushed if something happened at the concert or if Lily had to stop performing for good. And not just Himawari. All of Lily's fans in the village of Konoha. H.A. Baruto said awkwardly. Let's take this one. We can't just leave a person in trouble like this. What? Where is this coming from, Baruto? Sarada regarded him suspiciously. And nowhere. It's just, as ninja, we can't exactly let this go. I wasn't saying we should do nothing, she sighed. But if we're going to take a mission, it should be after we talk to the Lord Hokage. The Hokage is in a tough place, though. He's responsible for the village. He can't really take risks, you know? This is exactly when we Jin and gotta step up and be more flexible about stuff. The image of Sasuke flitted through the back of his mind. Baruto was behind Sarada and Natsuki in their training, but if they succeeded in guarding Lily while Sasuke was away, Baruto was sure his teacher would see how skilled he really was. Well, you do have a point. Sarada's attitude softened in the face of his powerful enthusiasm. What do you think, Mitsuki? If Baruto says he wants to do it, then I'm happy to go along with that. It was settled. Baruto was grateful to his teammates and the value they placed on their friendship. Sarada finished her chocolate tea. Okay. We gotta make a plan then. Where's the venue? Mitsuki asked. Konoha Dome. Lily gleefully pulled out a pamphlet. They just finished it last month. It's that dome-shaped stadium. The polycarbonate roof opens and closes so it can be totally open air, and the concourse is decked out like a hotel. It's a total dream venue. It's got 50,000 person capacity. Damn. Sarada slapped a hand on the low table, making the cups jump. That's way too dangerous. 50,000 people means every assassin in the world could walk right in and hide in plain sight. You're practically asking them to kill you. That's why I want to hire you, Lily protested. Oh. Right. Is that thing about the Uchiha clan using the Sharingan to look for suspicious P.O. dash my eyes or not some kind of surveillance camera? Serata looked like she might be about to pop a blood vessel. So, like, Lily? Mitsuki said after a few minutes of quiet thought. Your top priority is to sing, right? Yes. Not be in the spotlight or have everyone looking at you, right? Yes. Are you going to be singing live? No. I'll be lip syncing, of course. I see, Mitsuki murmured and turned his gaze toward Baruto. Then we'll just have to have Baruto do the heavy lifting. What? Baruto raised his eyebrows. Mitsuki patted his shoulder. You're going to take the stage dressed as Lily. 
You're doing it wrong, Baruvo. You have to be more cat-like in that final pose. Show the audience your toe beans. Be all mo. And you have to really put your hips into it when you're blowing kisses. Otherwise, the love won't reach the people in the back. I seriously have no idea what you're even talking about. Baruto's shoulders slumped and a ribbon attached to the Alice band on his head slid down to the ground. Tortured by the spectacle of wearing high heels, he still managed to squat down and pick it up. He was wearing the outfit Lily had planned to wear to bewitching Macara Knight, a puffy dress that reached down to the middle of his calves, a checkered jacket, and silver stiletto heels with sequins sewn on top, as if they weren't already sparkly enough already. You can do this, Baruto. The success of our plan is all up to you. Mitsuki offered up this bit of encouragement as if he were entirely removed from the situation. Baruto glared at him. Believing it far too risky to let Lily take the stage, Mitsuki had proposed that they use a double instead. Baruto was the lucky stand-in. Disguised as Lily, he would stand in the spotlight and move his mouth while the idol spoke from the wings between songs. Meanwhile, Sarada would search the crowd with her Sharingan, and Mitsuki would grab anyone who looked suspicious. Baruto, you're so cute. Sarada squealed. You look like a girl. Shut up, he snarled. Why aren't you the one doing this? If you can use the Sharingan, I'll gladly trade its places. Baruto couldn't argue with that. Naturally, he had firmly rejected Mitsuki's plan when he first heard it dash no way I'm dressing up as a girl. But when pressed, he'd been unable to come up with any alternatives. So he ended up taking on the role of Lily's double. Marshmallow, Marshmallow, Marshmallow. Have a marshmallow, come on, come on. Now Baruto found himself having to lend the choreography for Marshmallow Heart and the other twelve songs in the set list for the big. Day. Baruto. Lily sighed. Please move your eyes around more evenly. Lily belongs to everyone. There's gonna be 50,000 people. I can't look at every single one of them. You have to look at them. With determination. That one moment is eternal for the audience. What are you even talking about? Baruto didn't understand 90% of what Lily said, but he diligently put his athletic abilities to work in order to master her lessons. Learning the dances wasn't especially hard, nor was the between-song banter any real challenge. The issues were his pride and his shame. Whenever Baruto started to feel pathetic or to lose heart, he reminded himself that this was all for the sake of peace in the village and to get Sasuke to notice him. I can hardly call myself a ninja if I get hung up on my pride and lose sight of my objective. By the day before the live show, he'd somehow managed to hammer the basics of being Emino Lily into his head. You really did learn the whole thing in a week. Although I'd expect nothing less of a Konoha ninja. Lily was thoroughly impressed with Baruho's efforts. Well, it's for the sake of the mission. When old man Sasuke gets back, I want to stand tall and make our report to him. Old man Sasuke? Lily asked. Do you mean Sarada's father, Uchiha Sasuke? Yup. Old man Sasuke's my master. Baruto declared happily. Smiling, Lily narrowed her eyes. So Sasuke's your teacher then. Do you have one? He asked in return. Like, an idol teacher? I do. She nodded. Someone who inspired me to try to be an idol. I haven't seen him in a long time. But he's still my teacher, even now. Was she talking about a producer or something? He was curious, but the something about that faraway look in her eyes kept Baruto from asking her anything more. The day of bewitching Makara Knight arrived. A long line stretched out from the entrance to the dome, waiting to go inside. The audience was uniformly dressed in Lily's preferred shocking pink, large fans and pen lights in hand, eager for the doors to open. A shadowy figure looked down on the excited group. Cloak flapping in the wind, he sent his gaze racing over the surroundings, searching for something. The fans below were utterly absorbed in their excitement, and not one of them noticed Uchiha Sasuke. 
Whoa! There's a ton of people. Astonished, Baruta watched on the monitor in the dressing room as the audience seats filled up. Well, of course. It's actually sold out. Lily held her head high. With pink light sticks in hand, the capacity crowd looked like they could hardly wait for the show to start. Baruto noticed a large camera set up in the middle of the first floor seats. It bore the logo of a TV program he had actually appeared on himself. That's a TV camera. Looks like. I guess the show is going to be broadcast on a music program, Lily explained nervously. What? Baruto's eyes flew open. You didn't tell us that. I'm sorry. I only just found out myself. Gotta make sure my jutsu holds. He felt a touch of anxiety run through him, but the audience was already inside the dome. He couldn't turn back now. The start time was fast approaching. Baruto moved to the wings of the stage with Lily. The staff had already been informed of what was going on and had promised to keep quiet about the switch. Baruto transformed into Lily, grabbed the hem of his skirt between two fingers, and walked gracefully out into the center of the semicircular stage. Chilly smoke rolled down around him and off the edge. In the stiletto heels, Baruto stood nearly ten centimeters taller than usual. Baruto, your face is too stiff. In his earpiece, he could hear the voice of Lily watching from the wings. Everyone in the audience is your lover. Please look at them with love. But the seats are pitch black. I can't see faces, he whispered. If you look with your heart's eyes, you'll see them. As usual, he had no idea what she meant, but he'd come this far he just had to get out there and finish it now. He got into position, marked in phosphorescent tape on the floor. The smoke chilled his feet, but his head, caught in the beam of the spotlight, was hot. He could sense the excitement of the thousands of people on the other side of the thick curtain as though they were generating electricity. When he really thought about it, it was actually kind of amazing that this many people would come all this way just to hear someone sing some songs. Every person there was the fan of a single girl. They had come to see him Mino Lily. Not Baruto. Hey, Lily? Baruto said into the headset. Are you sure you're okay not being out here? What? It's just, you became an idol because you wanted to see this, yeah? I can't believe you're actually satisfied just watching from the wings. This is enough for me. Her response was immediate. He wondered if that was really the case. So why did you want to become an idol anyway? The curtain went up. A galaxy of shocking pink stars flashed before him. The cheer that rose up was deafening. Lily? Can you hear me? He was starting to wonder if there was something wrong with the earpiece when he heard Lily's voice, hesitant. I wanted to follow my master's teachings. Hey, I've been wanting to ask you. A round pin light snapped onto him and an incredibly loud upbeat tune began to play. The guitar intro of the first song. He cut the conversation short. Face vibrating at the rattling noise, Baruto gripped the microphone powered off, naturally and took the first step of the dance he'd worked so hard to memorize. In the arena seats Lily had gotten them, Sarada and Natsuki waited for the show to start. The standing seats were split into six blocks of two rows and three columns. Blocks A, B, and C were in front, while blocks D, E, and F were to the rear. Their seats were around the center of the B block, toward the front of the center of the arena. To blend in, they both had light sticks in one hand and fans that read Lily, over here, and I love you, Lily, in the other. Mitsuki was covering Y with his hand as per the plan. They were on the lookout for anyone suspicious, but at the moment, everyone looked like typical idol fans. Hey, Mickey. Isn't that a TV camera over there? Sarada pointed at the camera crew in the center of the first floor seats. Lily didn't say anything about a live broadcast. We'll just have to keep a low profile as we look for the assassin so that no one notices us, he replied. The lights started to go down in anticipation of the start of the concert. 
Sarada willed herself to relax and opened her eyes wide. They shone with a reddish light, and her pupils shrunk like a cat on the hunt. Shadows in the shape of Magatama popped up in her irises like inverted commas. The Sharingan, the unusual power she'd inherited from her father, allowed her to see through anything and everything in this world, and now she used it to skin the crowd. Behind them, she spotted two people carrying a metal pipe-like instrument, likely some kind of firearm. She couldn't sense any chakra. I see them. Guys with a gun. Probably not ninja. Location, Block F, last row. Let's go. Mitsuki darted away through the audience. The area was pitch black now that all the lights were down, but because he kept one eye covered while the lights were still up, his eyes were already accustomed to the darkness. According to Lily, they had about 35 seconds between the house lights going down and the stage lights popping on. They would need no more than 10 to make it to the F block. However, they weren't even out of the B block when the stage suddenly grew bright. What? Mitsuki cried. This isn't what she told us. Sarada snarled. That Lily Dash. It hadn't even been ten seconds, and already the introductory banter was blaring at them as smoke spilled over the edge of the stage and into the audience. We got trouble. They're on the move. Sarada shouted, watching the gun-toting men with her sharring gun. They're taking the long way around. Probably headed for the right side of Block A. They're going to shoot from the front row. But we can't move. Mitsuki groaned. The crowd had turned into a crush of people, pressing in closer from all directions and trapping the two ninja in place. But they couldn't exactly go tossing civilians aside, and if they tried to use any ninjutsu, it would be captured on camera. Lily. Over here. Lily. You're the best. The wild enthusiasm of the audience quickly took over and anything resembling order vanished. We have to do something. We have to get to the front row right now. Jammed in amongst the surging bodies, Sarada frantically scanned their surroundings and saw something strange a person surfing along on top of the crowd. Their prone body was held up and passed from fan to fan so that it moved slowly toward the stage at the front of the venue. The members of the audience seemed perfectly at ease with this body gliding along above their heads. In fact, they worked together like a well-oiled machine, as though this were the most natural thing in the world. Was this just something that happened at idol shows? We'll get them to carry us, too. Mitsuki shouted. Uh. Sarada couldn't believe what she was hearing. It's the only way we can get anywhere near those guys without revealing that we're ninja. He had no sooner spoken than he was kicking at the ground and jumping up onto the shoulders of the person in front of him. Gotta surf. The cool and collected Mitsuki she was familiar with disappeared. Now she watched as he spread his arms and dove on top of the audience, shouting like an excited fan. Whoa! Hold him up. Let him ride. The wild fans held Mitsuki's body up and passed him forward. What? I had no idea Mitsuki was that kind of guy. But whoa. I can't do that. No way. Vehemently opposed to any kind of human surfing, Sarada cast about. For another route to the front of the crowd, but stopped when she caught sight of Baruto on stage. Bathed in the spotlight, he was dancing in a dress and heels, sweat shining on his forehead. Did her own personality even matter in the face of a mission? Neither Baruto nor Mitsuki was even slightly accustomed to any of this, but they were both fighting hard, no matter how dorky they looked. This is no time for me to get all uptight. She leaped up onto a fan's shoulders. She could feel the passionate intensity of the excited crowd below. This is scary. I really don't want to do this. But I've got no choice. Oh Lily, you're the super best. Sarada shouted awkwardly. She spread her arms out and dove into the audience. Instantly, a swarm of hands sprang up around her body and began to whisk her away to the stage. She felt like a bamboo leaf flowing down a river. It was a strange, itchy sensation, but it was the fastest way to the stage. 
She was going to get there ahead of those men. She lifted her head slightly and looked toward Block A, then frowned when she realized she couldn't see the men anymore. She quickly scanned the area, but there was no sign of them. Had they changed their route? Mitsuki, she called out in a tense voice as Lily's fans carried her along. The target's on the move. Where? He shouted back. She narrowed her eyes to seek them out, but everyone was waving fans and jumping up and down, which made it hard to see. Oh. You're all in the way. Sarada cried in annoyance and opened her eyes wide. Sharing gun. Instantly, her field of view opened up. The movement of the people around her became crystal clear. Apparently, the gunmen had given up on the front row because of the crowd and were now racing up the stairs to the second floor. They're headed upstairs. Let's hurry. The ninja sat up on the wave of people and shifted until they were both moving the way they wanted to go. They were still able to make it look as though the crowd was carrying them as they crawled along on top of upthrust palms toward their targets. At the central aisle that separated blocks A, B, and C from blocks D, E, and F, they dropped to the ground. The passage was partitioned off by a fence. The air was less stuffy here, and Sarada breathed a sigh of relief. The second floor seats protruded over the rear block, so the only way to get to the stairs up from this central corridor was to head out into the concourse, through the doors to the rear, and then go around. Looks like we're going to have to dive again, Sarada said wearily. No. Mitsuki shook his head. There's no need for that. She gasped with sudden realization when she saw Mitsuki pressing on one eye. The current song Wu Love Fantasy Train was almost over. Once it ended, the lights would go out temporarily, and the cameras wouldn't be able to see them in the dark. Woo woo. Woo woo. Lovely star beam. Woo woo. Woo woo. Milky Moon Sexy. With one hand still over his eye, Mitsuki grabbed Sarada with his other. The gunmen were still crouching to the rear of the second floor seats, perhaps getting into position to fire. The song ended, the lights went out, and the area was plunged into darkness. Mitsuki stretched his arm toward the second floor seats and grabbed hold of the railing. Still holding Sarada, he contracted his arm and the two of them swung upward like Tarzan and Jane. The second floor was much calmer than the arena floor. Most of the people were sitting in their seats. Mitsuki and Sarada crawled along the narrow aisle until they reached the rear. The men were there, waiting for the lights to come back on. One of them held the gun. Neither appeared to be able to see in the dark. Sarada went around to the front while Mitsuki took the rear. Okay, next song. Here we go. Lily's voice came from the wings of the stage, and the lights flooded back on. At the same time, Sarada yanked away the gun. Before either man could so much as gasp in surprise, Mitsuki chopped at the napes of their necks. Both fell forward, unconscious. Mitsuki grabbed them by their collars and laid them out in the aisle. Their eyes had rolled all the way back in their heads. They were down for the count. Mission complete, huh? Sarada said as she took the bullets out of the gun. Ayo. Something grazed her hair. Huh? When she looked back in surprise, she heard the whoosh of air once more, and the bodies of the men in the aisle bounced slightly. She watched as a pool of red liquid slowly spread out beneath them. Both men now bore holes in their foreheads. Mitsuki quickly pressed his cuffs up against the wounds to try and stop the bleeding, but the gunmen were already dead. Someone took them out, she breathed. To shut them up? But from where exactly? It was too perfectly organized. Sarada activated her sharring gun again and sent her gaze racing around the area. The audience was utterly focused on the stage, so no one had noticed that anything strange was going on. They were as far back as you could get in venue. There were only a limited number of positions for a sniper to be targeting them from the spotlight above the stage, the lighting booth on the second floor, or there. She pointed at the roof of Konoha Dome. They're shooting from there? 
Mitsuki narrowed his eyes in that direction, but because the polycarbonate was fairly opaque, there was no way he'd be able to spot their shooter with the naked eye. But Soraya could see the figure of a man bearing a rifle with a scope just fine. He was lying flat on the roof, loading the rifle. There was a hole about the size of a tennis ball in the double polycarbonate roof, which the man was using to shoot into the arena. Reflexively, Soraya reached for a shuriken, but stopped herself. He's too far away. What are we supposed to do now? I hope Sarada and Mitsuki are getting it done. Even as he fretted, Baruto perfectly inhabited the role of Lily, although the tips of his toes were already throbbing in pain from being wedged into the stiletto heels. From this stage, he couldn't see what was going on in the audience, which only added to his anxiety. We'll do the call and response once this song ends, so please take action pattern B, Baruto. Lily's instructions coming through the earpiece were ceaseless. He desperately tried to remember all the gestures he practiced with her. He was pretty sure action pattern B was lifting an arm up, snapping his fingers together, and making a cute face. He awkwardly raised his hand. Are you all at chit? Lily shouted from the wings into the microphone in time with his movement. Chit. The unfamiliar word baffled him momentarily, but it was clearly what the audience wanted to hear. They threw their hands up enthusiastically. Yeah. Okay then. Let's go to the next show. Show? Baruto was perplexed once more as the speakers directly behind him started in with the upbeat opening. There's a way, Mitsuki murmured, glaring up at the sniper on the dome. But the audience will see, even during a blackout. The cameras, too. We're probably thinking the same thing. The Lawrence gun. If she used the technique they'd only just learned from Sasuke, she could reach the top of the dome with room to spare. But there were two risks. The first was that chances of success were low. The technique was composed of two separate actions, generating contained bolts of electricity and throwing a kunai. Sasuke was able to pull it all off by himself, but Sarada and her teammates had a long way to go before they could manage the same feat they made it work a few times during training by splitting the technique into its component parts, with Mitsuki providing the electric charge and Sarada throwing the kunai. But they still hadn't gotten to the point where they could precisely target a given location and actually hit it. The other risk was the fact that they would undoubtedly be exposed as Jenin. They'd definitely be censured for having let the two assassins die, but if they were exposed to the crowd, that would be the end of the live show Lily so desperately wanted. We can't just sit here and do nothing, Mitsuki said crisply in the face of Sarada's hesitation. You're right. I guess we've just gotta do it. Sarada gripped a kunai, and Mitsuki stretched out his hands, ready to generate the required. Current. Sarada, if the Lawrence gun succeeds, leave the venue right away. We'll tell them it was just me and Baruto who accepted this mission. What? No way. Absolutely not. She shook her head. Mitsuki sighed. I figured you'd say that. He steadied his hands and plasma crackled on his fingertips. Sarada had a sudden thought. If bolts were going to stand out in the darkness of a blackout, then they would just have to make sure it wasn't dark. Wait. I just had a good idea. Sarada checked Mitsuki and turned her shuriken toward the stage. Following her eyes, Mitsuki guessed her strategy and nodded. A momentary opening, hmm? It's almost too easy compared with Dad's training. The spotlight on top of the stage. If she could turn it toward the audience, she could dazzle the eyes of everyone in the place for a second or two. She threw two shuriken in quick succession. They spun through the air. Four ropes held the massive spotlight in place at precisely the height of the second floor seats. Her plates neatly severed the two ropes in front. The light lurched forward to shine on the crowd below. Huh? What's going on? It's so bright. The audience turned their faces away, dazzled. In that opening, Mitsuki stretched out his arms toward the man on top of the dome. Here we go, Sarada. 
the current shot forward from his hands, blending in with the light of the spotlight. Aiming for the center of these two parallel bolts, Saraha threw a kunai with everything she had. Please. With a feeling like a prayer, she watched the blade race through the air. The brown tip headed for the space between the two currents as if sucked in by them. Squeak. The force of the magnetic field sent the kunai streaking up into the roof to knock the sniper's rifle flying. The sniper lost his balance and toppled. Over. We got him. It was a sink or swim strategy, but it had worked. Sarada and Natsuki slapped their hands together in a high five. Meanwhile, on stage, stagehands raced up onto the catwalk to frantically retie the ropes that had inexplicably snapped in the middle of the show. Even during this series of accidents, Baruto kept dancing, a true professional. The current song was a ballad, and he pretended to sing passionately, making great use of his fists. He guessed that Sarada and Natsuki were responsible for the light. What are they even doing? Of all times, right when I'm in the middle of the best part of the song. The people in the audience had also gotten used to the dazzling light at this point and listened quietly to the moving song, shielding their eyes with their hands. Love is sweet chocolate. If it's love, you and sweetie. The lyrics, as always, described curious and whimsical worlds, but set to the gentle melody, they started to sound strangely ballad-like in their own special way. Baruto, that's great. Please keep it up. Walk gently to the front of the stage. Baruto moved toward the front just as Lily instructed, and the front row shrieked and waved their hands at him. Countless pink light sticks flickered and shone in the crowd. The song was coming to its end. Once this ballad was over, they'd do a 180 and bring out a big dance number. Snap. He suddenly heard a pop in his ear, and then something very weird happened, his arms began to move on their own. What the dash? His arms steadily moved up toward the ceiling despite the fact that he wanted them to do something entirely different. The microphone fell to the ground with a dull thud, causing a burst of ear-splitting feedback. If the audience found out he wasn't the real Lily, they would riot, and the TV cameras would catch the moment for posterity. He focused everything he had on pushing his arms back down. His muscles trembled from the strain. What's going on? Some kind of jinjutsu? Lily's voice continued to sing at the same loud volume despite the fact that he had dropped the mic. The fans began to murmur worriedly. As Baruto started to panic, the pink nails on his fingertips shimmered. No. He refocused the chakra in his body and his hand temporarily turned back into Lily's. A moment later, the costume disappeared again. What is even happening? His body was trying to undo his transformation technique despite his own intentions. The chakra that was giving the order to undo the jutsu and the chakra that was giving the order to continue with these two contradictory forces appeared to be fighting in the same arm. His hand changed back and forth from Lily's to his, blinking like a signal light. What? Huh? What's happening to Lily? Hey, is this maybe a hologram performance? You gotta calm down and get this jutsu under control, Baruto told himself desperately. He tried to move his inexplicably restrained body. His ankles gave out under him. The heels fell off and Baruto collapsed onto the stage. His feet were also turning back. The color drained from his face. He'd lost his balance because his feet had gotten smaller and the stiletto heels had come off. Finally, in front of 50,000 fans, his face began to spasm. It had only been an hour since he'd turned into Lily. Normally, it was easy for him to maintain a transformation for that length of time longer, even. And yet her face shuddered and was replaced with his own. His entire body began to shrink. It was all over. The jutsu was fading. Punk. His body was wrapped in smoke, and the transformation jutsu was released. He was Baruto once more. Huh? What happened to Lily? The audience strained their eyes to get a better look at the stage. All at once, something enveloped the area around him a wall of water, as high as he was tall, surrounding Baruto like a cage. 
What is this? What's going on? He realized that his body was his to move again. He didn't get it, but he wasn't about to waste this chance. Hurriedly, he will the signs to restore his lily form. The blasting music stopped abruptly and the dome fell silent. He could see a human shadow on the other side of the water wall. The shadow squatted down and picked something up. And then Baruto heard the thunk of the mic being turned on and he realized the shadow had picked up the microphone. Show's over. The voice was emotionless and carried well, nothing like Lily's high-pitched voice. All of you, leave immediately. Anyone acting suspiciously will be arrested. What is old man Sasuke doing here? Baruto shuddered, staring at the blurry shadow on the other side of his water prison. Naturally, the audience revolted at this order. What the hell? You gotta be kidding. You a ninja? Let Lily go. Keep the show going. Baruto heard Sasuke sigh in annoyance. Suddenly, Baruto felt a frightening amount of chakra surge forth, and a chill ran up his spine. A hair-raising purple giant sprouted up to block out the dome ceiling. The warrior, clad in a traditional battle surcoat, held a massive bow. Its stern, golden eyes glittered fiercely, demonically. If you don't want to die, you will leave the dome. Right now. Every last one of you. A terrified silence descended on the crowd. In the next instant, the members of the audience scrambled from the venue, screaming. After chasing out 50,000 unarmed civilians by threatening them with Sasano oil, Sasuke whirled around, thrust a hand through the water wall, and grabbed Baruto's shoulder. About time for you to go back to your usual self, Baruto. Poof. The transformation jutsu was released the instant Sasuke's fingers touched him. He should have still looked like Himino Lily, but in the blink of an eye, he was Baruto again. The wall of water fell away, and Baruto stared in utter confusion, unable to absorb even the first detail about what was happening. Where's the real Himino Lily? Sasuke asked him, his face. Expressionless. Oh. She's just over, huh? Baruto pointed into the wings, but there was no sign of Lily there. He craned his neck searching for her, while beside him, Sasuke activated his Sharingan. Escaped up, Ichim, he muttered, before turning toward the catwalk above the stage and throwing a shuriken. Yeah. Lily came falling down and Sasuke caught her Madeir by the arm. Hey, what are you doing? You could have for real hurt me, you know? So that was you then. Sasuke nodded. Huh? Baruto blinked rapidly and looked from Sasuke and back to Lily again. Do they know each other? End of chapter 2 Thank you for listening. Remember to like and subscribe for lots more.